Hello and welcome to another edition of TechCast. Our guest today is Ivan Sereni, CEO and co-founder at Ferrot Security Canada. Thank welcome you for Ivan. having me. It's a pleasure having you here. Tell us something yes. about the company. Yes, uh, we do very exciting things. Right. We help a lot of organizations mm. ensure that their websites, web apps, mobile apps are secure and compliant. Right. With many, many different laws, regulations, and standards, including the payment security. Absolutely, standards. absolutely. Yes. Now, that 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 puts the whole context into perspective. We're seeing AI and technology exploding. Now, yes. when it comes to virtual uh, apps and you know virtual devices, yeah. where do you think the challenges lie as far as security go and wh why uh, why is it so difficult to uh, make sure that these devices are secure completely secure yeah oh that's a very broad question but really <laughs> yeah, important questions yeah. first thing i would say is let's define a virtual devices or right, devices right. Uh, one of the ways we can define it is a point where a consumer is actually right. interacting right. with a company whether mm, it's through mm. a mobile app or any anything right. that enables them to maybe make a purchase mm. or you know schedule a doctor's appointment or right. log in into a bank account. And what we see is happening is organizations, for example, are facing multiple threats. Right? Right, right. There are security threats, like intrusions, mm -hmm. or there are back doors that somebody mm -hmm. forgot mm -hmm. to close right. or intentionally had built in. Right. And a new emerging and very snowballing, kind of very quickly snowballing mm -hmm. threat is commercial tools, normal right. commercial tools, right. like marketing tracker, analytic tools, mm -hmm chatbots and whatnot that uh, end up having access to PII or cardholder information, right, financial right, records, health right. records. And that uh, creates a whole new challenge for organizations to keep them, themselves compliant and secure. Absolutely. Right. Now, uh, sec uh, I mean, when it comes to the region, the Middle yeah. East region in particular, yeah. what do you see as some of the great big challenges and what are some of the opportunities here as far as, you know, the virtual yeah. Uh, devices and the virtual landscape is yeah. concerned. Yeah, uh, excellent question. One thing, especially in the region, in the Middle East, mm. you know, it, it's a huge move to digitize everything. Right, right. Uh, bring everything into mobile phones, bring everything, make it life easier. Right, <laughs> like, right. Make life modern. I would <laughs> right. say like even postmodern. <laughs> right, like, like right. aspirational for the rest of the world to follow, uh, which is great. Uh, but it also comes with a lot of, you know, intricacies and mm, complexity. Hey, absolutely. Uh, when you're paying for your parking mm. or when you're paying for your hydro bill or electricity bill through any kind of means, right. how do you ensure that everything is secure there? Mm. How do you make sure that citizens' information is not Correct. being lost, is not being right. inappropriately accessed by Correct. third parties, is not going to a country of concern, Correct. Uh, which can create personal security risks, but also national security right. aspects as right. well. Yeah. Now, you, you talked about payments, you talked about uh, the virtual, uh, you know, yeah. interactions. Now, uh, if I may uh, look at it this way, like technology, you have one, technology on one side, you have yeah. humans on the other side. Yeah. Which one do you think is the greater threat to security and what is <laughs> causing the biggest problems? <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's actually... <laughs> Really good technology in bad hands or in wrong hands. It's actually a good combination of that. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I think I yeah. think that's the yeah. right one. Yeah. For example, AI, mm. when it's in the wrong hands or in the right. bad hands or mm. in the bad actor's hand, right. it becomes extra powerful mm. and mm. extra dangerous. Right. 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 And at the same time, when AI tools are in the defender's hands, in the good mm. hands, in the right hands, mm. it becomes a really amplif good amplifier for organizations or for people to right. protect themselves, to keep themselves secure and ensure that they're more defended against the bad actors <laughs> that are also using AI. Absolutely. And, and for example, one of the things I heard mm. is becoming a big, big um, threat factor mm. A couple of weeks ago, I was in D.C., in Washington, mm, D.C., mm. and we were uh, meeting with a lot of you know, folks from a lot of right. three-letter agencies. Mm. And one of the really, really important mm. new emerging threat is something called holographic code. Mm. So that's where, for example, a, uh, adversary, adversary actors mm -hmm. use AI to really distribute, uh, widely distribute a threat right. where 
a piece of a code is in one library, in another library, in another library. And right. when you do, tr again, any kind of traditional security analysis, right. you will never be able to, get, to right. guess that it's right. even there. Right. Uh, so that is, is a really, really mm. new, newly emerging thread because AI is being used by bad actors. Correct. But at the same time, when you use AI to find it, Correct. it actually becomes a really useful tool. Absolutely. AI right. is a double-edged sword, we all know. Yes. But how much of the actual AI uh, ecosystem do companies really understand and take in like see AI has to be customized there's so much of yeah. it around you have to know what is good for you and you have to know what works for you yeah. but do you actually think companies in the region or uh, let's say globally are actually aware of what they need and how much they need of AI yeah, uh, yeah. this is actually a very broad question but very powerful question <laughs> um, here's what I see especially in the, globally and right. in the region in the mm -hmm. Middle East there is one approach to AI okay, from a high level. Let's look at it. What can it do for us? Right. Which is good. It's innovative. It's explorative. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one, which is kind of like following the jobs to be done framework. Like, right. What are the jobs that need to be done? Right. And how can we use AI to get those jobs done? Right. So we don't have to overload humans. Right. And that's, that approach we see is really, really common here. Mm. And people are asking, okay, what do you need to get done? How do we get it done? How mm. can I... What do I do using mm. humans? Mm. What would it be mm. like? Okay, what if I do it with AI? Right. How do I... Like, and the, Oh, that actually opens up a Correct. whole new side. Okay, that makes my life easier. It looks like I don't have to overload my people with 100 new tasks. Correct. And Correct. so that's where we see uh, AI being very, very successful. Right. Now, yeah. when, when we talk of AI and cybersecurity frameworks, yeah. we come to another related aspect of it, which is compliance. Yeah. Now, in your experience, where are we with the compliance, the compliance scenario? I mean, uh, well, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of action, but yeah. where exactly are we? Ooh, so <laughs> compliance, I can again put it in a couple of different baskets, right? right. Uh, one of it is AI, compliance of AI. Right. Okay, that's a one topic altogether. Right. You know, Europe has its own kind of AI now right. law. Right. US, uh, states in the US have their right. own laws. Uh, and in a region, there is obviously an approach right, to right. govern AI. That's one topic. Uh, another topic to compliance is where AI is mm. being used to help comply with other right. things that already right. exist. And here's a going back to jobs to be done. Mm. Mm. We see a lot of consumer facing brands like right. airlines, hos hospitals, Correct. hospitalities, hotels. Correct. They now have to comply with GDPR or PDPL in Correct. UAE Correct. and with every single regional law. Now imagine if you have to comply with 50 laws, mm. <laughs> right? You need to hire people. You Correct. would need to hire Correct. maybe a couple of hundred people to right. actually continuously right. do that. But that's where AI really comes in mm. to streamline. Do it in seconds rather than in months. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And AI becomes a really good enabler. Correct. Mm. And that brings us to a very um, interesting question or a significant question yeah. here. You talked about hiring more people. You talked yeah. about the workforce. Do you actually yeah. think AI will replace human beings at some point of time? If not now, yeah. at least tomorrow, will it? Will there be a yeah. situation where AI completely takes over and human beings don't are not needed anymore? Yeah. You know what? It, it is a really big question. So, the, what I hear: Will AI replace people or humans? I actually here's how I think. Mm. And I've, I remember it back in the 90s and in 2000s, how will internet replace people? No, mm. it just internet uh, people that used internet right. replace people who did not use internet. Right. So the same with AI. What I believe and what I see is happening is that it's not that AI is replacing people, mm. it's that people who use AI are replacing people who do not use AI. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think, I think you've hit the nail on the head. It's yeah. not a complete replacement yeah. of the human race altogether but it's yeah. people who know ai versus people who don't know ai so that that brings up the question of keeping up yeah. with you know the the pace of you got AI. it yeah absolutely yes. so tell me what is your company's uh, sort of focus on ai or what is your company's yeah. vision going to be going forward yeah uh so he here's what we already do mm. what we brought mm. to the to the right. market already right. this this right. year alone um we brought in AI into right. uh, assessment of and a compliance assessment, mm -hmm. and not just compliance with privacy laws, but right. also with national security concerns. Here's an example. You might have heard that obviously in the news how DeepSeek's website had code embedded that is, right. you know, coming mm. from China Mobile. Mm -hmm. In but here's a challenge was in America, China Mobile is sanctioned. 
So it's not authorized to perform right. any commercial activities, especially right. collect information of mm -hmm. Americans. Mm -hmm. So how do you connect uh, an API right. to, um, uh, to the data that mm -hmm. is being collected, mm -hmm. to the fact that th this API is owned by a company that is owned by China Mobile, which was at that time designated as a, a military organization by the American Department of Defense, which right. is now the Department right. of War. And so this is uh, where AI came in, and in mm. seconds it can connect all of those dots, mm. where for humans it would take days or weeks. Right, so right. this is one of the reasons why mm. Uh, mm. AI is really powerful. We already brought it in uh, into the market. And another just direction of AI, mm. uh, what we're doing, what we believe, what we're mm. bringing into our mm. customers is literally getting the list of jobs right. that have to be done no matter what in right. order to secure and make yourself compliant uh, with the regulation standards here's maybe 150 different jobs that have to be done mm. and rather than hiring or forcing people to do it give ai agents give ai productivity tools right. to get it right. done in seconds right and this is it's a huge huge amplifier for productivity so going back to your question about replacing people no right. it actually doesn't replace it amplifies people's effectiveness absolutely no i love the way you yeah. explained the whole thing it yeah. actually amplifies it it doesn't sort yeah. of diminish it but it just you know uh so yeah. that brings me to the question what excites you most about ai what is it what is the one thing about ai that yeah. completely like has you you know yeah uh, first of all it's uh the amplification like i already just said amplification it makes us quicker faster better mm. but it does not remove human element because uh, you might have seen already in the news that courts courts had ruled that in many courts, like you can use AI even in a defense case, right? But make sure that it's correct; it doesn't hallucinate. <laughs> correct. So what correct. excites me is actually humans are still in control, in control, and in, in charge. Second thing that really excites is that, especially in the region here, mm. there's a huge build out of data centers. So that means that AI will be available right here, right next door. Mm. All the processing, all the LLMs will be processing mm. everything here. So that latency will be reduced, will make right. it even more useful. Right. And a third, personally, I'm really excited about AI in devices on the edge. Good. The human ro humanoid robots are coming. Uh, maybe AI models will be coming to our phones so we don't have to be constantly connected. Right. So this is really exciting. I cannot wait to see what the reality will be, what the world, world will be next year and two years from now, once the AI is everywhere, everywhere. around us. Uh, you know, I have a feeling even handsets might be replaced. We might be using some virtual, you know, so, uh, 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 some connected, something like a mic or something like, you know, to, to communicate. I think even handsets might become obsolete as we go along. You never know. I mean, AI is yeah. exploding, so... Yeah, it's, anything is possible. So, so that will be very interesting, uh, kind of human experience, user experience, right. when there's a something plugged into your ear or the AI exactly, glasses, and you don't and have to carry your phone around. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yes. So. Uh, and also, I'm really curious, how will culture respond to this? Exactly. Like, exactly. Am I interacting with you as a person, or am I interacting uh, correct, with correct. your AI system while looking into your correct, eyes? Correct. That will be an interesting uh, absolutely, experience. absolutely. But does not scare you as well? Like, uh, where is it heading, kind of thing? Like. Yeah, you know, is it coming to a point where I don't even recognize the human being next to me? It's going to be another AI phenomena sort of thing. Yeah, it's uh, scary. No, it, it, <laughs> it doesn't scare. But uh, I'm really excited. Like I remember in the 80s, in the 90s, all the, in, the, in the 2000s, like all the new technology evolutions are coming in, right. and I always I see, oh my God, this is something new. It's going to make it us better. It's, yes, right. TV came in, digital TV. If you remember when it came out. Then satellite TV, then intranet came Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Then intranet became everywhere. Then smartphones, and they all—they didn't uh, really made our lives harder. They just changed it, and it just—we have a completely just like smartphones, mobile apps change our lives. Absolutely. Fifteen years ago, you could could you imagine to be ordering Uber or you know? I know. Higher, I mean, like, and the car comes in five minutes. I no. know. Okay. Even uh, even noon and apps have 15 minute delivery whatever you order even in the middle of the night they deliver in 15 minutes so that's like exactly and i i've been in dubai for a week more than a week mm. right now and i still did not pull out my credit card a single time i'm always right. through the phone like you you know touch pay apple pay you know google pay everything is now in a very new way so going back to your question am i scared about it no nah. i'm actually really excited absolutely but we need to be smart about absolutely. it absolutely like, yes. my last question to you about is about jitex and this whole yeah. event uh, 
how has your experience been so far and what is uh, your company spotlighting here yeah oh it's fantastic it's uh jidex in dubai it's, it's leading the world it's Absolutely. Uh, uh some of the most exciting like notable things mm. is obviously the the flying cars the flying the the, uh, the taxi the I just cannot imagine in a year or two or three actually probably taking a flying cab <laughs> from the airport <laughs> to the hotel. Absolutely. I, I'm sure it will happen. I just yeah, cannot yeah. wait. Uh, and what else is uh, stand, really stands out is how thoughtful and uh, the, the the government, the culture is and how how wise are the decisions that are being made. Right, right. Bring technology, scale it, lead the world build data centers Correct. which is incredible it's very refreshing like uh, the the government and the region is really up forward it's it's already living in the future Absolutely. even when you compare it to you know canada us uk work those countries are kind of lagging behind us i'm <laughs> really really impressed i'm really excited i'm really excited about dubai and jitex this year absolutely absolutely yes. you know you've given us some very brilliant uh, yeah. insights and perspectives into ai and its evolution yeah. and you've made us kind of relook certain aspects of ai and mm-hmm. the conversation with you has been like really really interesting yeah. and really refreshing yeah. Um, yeah, really appreciate having me. <laughs> Great questions. Really <laughs> Thank enjoyed you it so as well. much. Thank you yes. so much for this this brilliant conversation. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time yes. to talk to us. It was a pleasure having you. My pleasure as well. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>